AMD is mad at retailers for lowering prices. Bad news for these new NVIDIA GPUs. Intel CPUs are crashing your game and Ryzen 10,000 specs are wild. Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, this story originally comes from the Chinese news site My Drivers, where they actually discuss the fact that AMD is not too happy about retailers lowering prices on their RX 6750 GRE or Golden Rabbit Edition series GPU. Don't forget that the Golden Rabbit Edition is the China only variant that AMD released not too long ago. And as you can see right here, the initial price was set for the 10 gigabyte model to be 2219 RMB with the 12 gigabyte model at 2379 RMB. But Prices have reportedly dropped to 2149 for the 10 gigabyte and 2249 for the 12 gigabyte. And AMD is not too happy about that. It says that it is reported that in the recent enforcement, if AMD discovers online selling prices of the 6750 GRE below the minimum price, they will directly approach brand manufacturers and distributors imposing certain penalties. More specifically, for the first, second, and third instances, a fine of 500 years on per card will be imposed and if a fourth instance is identified a fine of a thousand yuan will be applied and AIB brand manufacturers will be required to halt sales directly to those retailers so yeah they are not happy about this at all but what's wild to me is the fact that they have yet to even launch their newer RX 7600 XT into the Chinese market and you can see down here that it says the strategic move allows them to clear out existing stock of GPUs while paving the way for the introduction of the newer architecture. The issue is that if you're wanting to clear out stock, lowering prices is a really good way to do it. So it sort of doesn't really make sense here why AMD is imposing this, why they're against retailers lowering prices. Now, obviously lowering prices in one market can adversely affect other markets like the US and things like that. You definitely don't want a race to the bottom type scenario, but this is a China only GPU. Of course, they can end up selling it to other markets and then those markets could sell them, but why not put restrictions like that on it? I don't know, this does seem like a fairly odd move from AMD and given GPU prices lately, I definitely don't think this is a great move. And next up for today, if you've been following this channel, and of course, if you aren't, you definitely should subscribe and make sure to hit that bell icon so you keep up with all the new PC hardware news. Either way, if you have been following, you know that I've stayed fairly close to the story of the original new 16-pin power connectors on NVIDIA's new 4000 series GPUs. They obviously, at least for the 4090, were having issues with melting the card. Now, there is a bit of a debate. Is it user error or is it the issue with the connector itself we do know that one of the main reasons this happens if not the only one is because it isn't fully seated properly though since then we have heard word from other users that hey they had theirs all the way in and this still happened well in the face of all this a new connector was born Instead of the 12V HPWR header, it became the 12V 2x6 header. And the way you can tell the difference between these is that the newer header has H++ on it, while the older header shows H+. And of course, since this, we have seen multiple GPUs with these new headers, but there's actually some that are brand new, specifically the super cards that still include the old 12 VHPWR connector. And to quickly go over some of these differences, well, for one, the new header can actually transmit even more wattage than the older one, but there's a couple really crucial differences to the connector itself. You can see here that the sense pins have actually been pushed a little bit back. And what this should do is that if it isn't inserted all the way it will likely just cease to work compare that to the older one the pins are obviously much longer so they shorten them quite a bit here and i do think that's obviously an important change along with a few others but regardless as you can see right here this user on twitter actually claims that some aic's for the, so these are board partner cards for 4070 Super, 4070 Ti Super, and 40A Super are still using the older interface. You can actually see right here that, yeah, this is the new one H++, but here 
is the older H+. And apparently these are coming on some of the newer Super GPUs. Now, the 4070 Super, 4070 Ti Super, I wouldn't be too, too worried about those just because they likely don't pull enough current to do anything like melt the cards. We haven't really seen too many things other than the 4090 where it actually melts. But the 4080 Super is certainly getting up there in terms of performance and power draw. So I'm not going to lie. That's a little bit concerning. Of course, if you want to know whether your card has this or not, unfortunately, while you can tell, I will say you'll likely have to remove the shroud over it. But you are at least able to tell if you have the newer connector or the old. And next up, there's been some reports, well, increased reports, of crashing in Unreal Engine games. And at least one organization seems to know who to blame. As you can see right down here, it says a division of Epic Games is pointing the finger at Intel's latest CPUs when it comes to an increasing number of reported Unreal Engine game crashes. Modern top-end CPUs are jammed full of cores, all running at high speeds, and it takes a lot of energy to keep them running like this. That's particularly true for Intel's most recent Core i9 processors, which are some of the most power-hungry chips around, and to eke out even more performance, motherboard vendors often use BIOS settings that push things even further. And at least according to this, it says that all of this seems to be the culprit for increased reports of games and app crashes, especially those built in Unreal Engine. And this comes from RAD, a division of Epic Games that developed the Bink video codec and Oodle data compression tech used in hundreds of games on the market. It actually points it right to Intel. Now, before I get a little bit further into this, I will say that it's pretty wild that they don't just point to Intel, but they point to specific Intel CPUs. A lot of times when big brands come out and they make statements like this, it's more generalized, likely because they're worried of lawsuits and things like that. But given the fact that they name very specific processors and flat out blame them, at least primarily for this issue, I will say that's potentially something to take to the bank. Like I said, they are potentially risking a lawsuit from Intel for this, so if they're really willing to put all of this out there, there's at least a decent chance that it is true. Either way, as you can see in a statement, they said, quote, we believe that this is a hardware problem which affects primarily Intel 13,900K and 14,900K processors, less likely the 13700 and 14700 and other related processors as well. They further go down to state, it says the software team states that the problems have nothing to do with any code in its products or Unreal and notes that other software like Cinebench, Handbrake and Visual Studio also exhibit the same issue. So yeah, they're flat out calling Intel out here. Now, whether this does 100% end up being the case, I have no doubt that this almost certainly won't be the last that we hear from this. But once again, it's pretty wild hearing something so specific from a company. Either way, if you are having this issue, there are at least a couple things that you can do. As you can see right here, it says one simple fix that may work is reducing the clock multiplier for the P cores down a notch or two. For example, the default value, let's say it's 55, then you'd want to drop it down to 54 or 53, and that could stop the crashes from occurring. Now, they do go on to state that the easiest way to do this is through XTU, though obviously you'll have to uh, reapply the settings every time you boot your computer. A more permanent way is through the BIOS. There's also a couple more settings that they mention here. It says, while you're there, which meaning the BIOS, you may also want to tweak a few of their values. I have an ASUS motherboard in my PC and it has one specific setting labeled ASUS multi-core enhancement. This forces the CPU to operate a little faster than Intel's default values, but it also makes the CPU consume more energy. Disabling it lowers performance a notch, though you will gain more stability. There are a couple more examples of fixes that they mention further on, but Basically, this is not a good look for Intel. We always knew that 13th gen and of course 14th gen are some pretty power hungry beasts, but I never would have imagined that they were having stability issues this badly that major companies were having to come out and say, yeah, it's not us. Stop blaming us. It's Intel.
And lastly for today, AMD's Ryzen 9000 series still isn't here yet, but in the meantime, we're actually hearing some new stuff about their next generation Ryzen 10,000. As you can see down here, it says two core architectures are currently being worked on by AMD. These are specifically the code names for their core architectures. We have Zen 5 Nirvana and Zen 6 Morpheus. It goes on to state that the Zen 5 architecture is set to debut this year under the Granite Ridge CPU and Strix Point APU series. Granite Ridge being the desktop, their main desktop Ryzen 9000 CPUs. Then obviously Strix Point APUs are going to be their APUs, hopefully for desktop, but then of course notebooks. It then goes on to state that the former is said to incorporate the same RDNA 2 iGPU as Raphael, as both architectures are said to use the same I.O. die where the GPU is located. Strix Point, on the other hand, is the APU that's apparently set to use Navi 3.5. But now we move on to Zen 6. This one, obviously codenamed Medusa, will apparently get a pretty major shift. These are coming from known leaker Everest on Twitter, and you can actually see right here, it says that Medusa will use a 2.5D interconnect with a much higher bandwidth. Remember that the interconnect is very important, especially with AMD CPUs, just because they use a multi-chiplet design. So you have multiple chiplets combined into one using what they call the infinity fabric, which is their interconnect. But this is apparently gonna have a much faster one using a 2.5D interconnect instead of their more traditional multi-die design, meaning that the discussion between two chiplets should be significantly faster. And one thing that's really interesting about this, and it's something that you definitely know from AMD in the past, is that games really like to talk cross CCX. Earlier on with the Zen architecture, the interconnect was so slow that AMD didn't really do all that great in games, yet did amazing in multi-threaded workloads for more professional applications. Since then, they have made the interconnect quite a bit faster, and therefore it's helped them make some pretty big leaps in gaming, as well as obviously increasing clocks and things like that, but a much faster interconnect, like a complete redesign of the interconnect could make for way faster gaming performance. Not only that, but according to this, Medusa is apparently set to come with an RDNA 5 iGPU, meaning it's set to skip RDNA 4. Now, this is obviously good news for Ryzen 10,000, but... It may not be all that great for our DNA 4 because this more or less looks like it might kind of be confirming the fact that RDNA 4 isn't set to be some big leap over RDNA 3. Instead, it's mostly going to be focusing on more mid to lower end GPUs. With that said, RDNA 5 iGPUs in Ryzen 10,000, as well as that new interconnect, could make for a monstrous upgrade. Fingers crossed. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Ryzen 9000 and then of course Ryzen 10,000? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.